Hi everyone, back again to finish this forgotten gate. We will finish the texturing of our scene. If you didn't watch the previous video, you will find the links in the description below. Also, please consider like and subscribe to support this channel. Let's get back to our brick texture. We will create the most texture on top of the brick. Add a noise texture and connect the texture coordinate to it to fix the stretched textures. This node will be used to position the mouse. We can give some initial values to the parameters, but we don't need to waste too much time on it yet. Now we will add a color ramp node to increase the contrast of our noise texture. We are good for this part, but right now, the mouse is generated everywhere on our rocks. And if we think about how the mouse is growing, we should have more of it where the water has a chance to stay like on top of each brick. Let's see how we can proceed to do so. First, we will need the separate RGB node to decompose the normal information given by the texture coordinate node. We can connect them together And now have a look to each output. As you can see, in my case, the blue output corresponds to the faces oriented in the same way as the z-axis, which is also blue by the way. So, if I resume, I have a kind of value representing how much the water has a chance to stay on the face. We will then use a color ramp node to play again with the contrast or at least to have more control on this. Now, we will mix both of our results to get a mouse position more natural. I decided to use the normal information as the factor input to know where to let the noise texture pass. I recommend you to take some time to understand what is going on here, that's why I set this color to a very light Green. Now we will set the type of mix to subtract and we will change back the color to white. Here I tried some settings but you will see the end result later. You can also adjust previous parameters and play with them. Here, the mouse will be positioned where the color is black. Now, we can connect a color ramp node to replace the black color to green for the mouse. We will also make sure that the color will go from green to black without any shades in between to sharp the mouse area. You should get two handles at almost the same position but with two different colors. Now we can set up the rest of the color variation of our mouse. And adjust other parameters. Let's have a look to the bricks that are on the ground. As we can see, the moss is concentrated on top of it, which is great. Now, we will create a diffuse shader to complete the moss texture.
we will set up the normal map with a bump node. Use a noise texture to generate the normals. I recommend to preview the normals to modify the parameters of the noise. Also, don't forget to increase the roughness to around 0.8. Now, we need to add this most texture to the one we created previously for the bricks. Here, I made a little mistake by hiding the add shadow node, but I will realize we won't need it and we will replace it by the mix shader. Don't worry, you can follow this anyway. We also need the mix shader. Then, we will convert the mouse color to a black and white texture to get the information about where exactly the mix shader should let the mouse texture pass or not. In my case, I also add a color ramp node to increase the contrast to make sure I don't get gray variations in the end texture. This texture will contain the information about should I show the mouse shader or the brick shader. Keep in mind that if you keep some grey shades between black and white, it will result in a mix of both textures. Then I plug in the color to the factor input. And now, I connect the bricks shader to the black output of the mix shader, which is the top one, et voilà. Now, you can play with all the previous parameters to custom your end texture as you want. Let's clean up our graph and create a group node for the most part of our texture. Here is the end result of the graph when I realized I didn't need the add shader node I spoke about earlier. Now we'll create some little blue particles to add some magic effect to our scene. We'll press Shift A and add an icosphere. We will also reduce the size of it. We can move it around our scene and make sure to change its matter to the red one. Also, make sure to change the shade to smooth. Now, we can duplicate it and add some more in our scene.
When this is done, we will prepare the camera for the final render. Here, it's up to you. Et voilà, we end up with a nice render. This tutorial is finally over. We covered some basic and advanced features of Blender. Hope you learned a lot of things and enjoyed this long tutorial with me. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to support this channel. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye.